be in the hell, boy. With my brother, Connor Ball. We going in. Sheesh. We don't talk about things that we don't see. We just push them down. Don't care what the sound we just want some truth. We just want some truth. Oh. Something in between. Gotta keep that in between, you know. We're all so confused. Ain't no like it right here. Yeah. No okay. Yeah. We just trying to wake them up because we tired of sending for dreams. Yeah. They told us we was niggas because they found out we kings. And when the king get obscene or with a scene, they never seen. Thought he coming back loving. I guess he over the jeans. Okay. Woo. You see, that's just the way the flow go. Been whipping on our backs alone. We almost touched the flow though. It felt like positive mogo. We living low with the logo. Yeah. But now we in the spirit because we filled up with the logo. Yeah. So, oh no. You will not us become a repentance. Yeah, he is going to choose Israel. That's a reversal sentence. So yes, we got a mention to the kingdom of God. Don't think it's hard. Uh, and shout out to your Howard to help us see through the thoughts. Things yeah. that we don't see, we just push them down. Don't care what the song means. We just want some truth. Something in between. Cause we're all so confused. I ain't no okay. Yeah. We just want the truth, cause we've been tired of all the lies, though. Pretending that they shepherds, but really was in disguise, bro. Burning pagan images and through our hearts and minds, yo. All they see is money and spell it with double eyes, though. Open up your eyes, black man, can you see it or not? They came up with the perfect story just to think in they plot. Of land that is over, really, it's all. So, yeah, we preach it on the street, but thought I hide it in bars. So, you can get it, or maybe get with it, or even study. Supposed to be the leader, but under, cause we don't study. Yep, that's for sure that we've been hoodwinked out. So, we salute in all the camps that bring the truth on that. We just want some truth, something in between, cause we're all so confused, I ain't no more shiny things, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Shalom, Israel. It's your brother, New Breed, coming through with another live stream, giving you that spiritual voltage that you signed up for. Peace and blessings to everybody joining. If y'all like that song right there, the artist is Monologue Magad. And I think that track right there is very timely because that brother is actually a father of 10. Yes, that brother has. 10 children so go support his music he's been on the show uh he's a former member of uh, gideon's army number one gospel record top charting gospel records i mean the brother's powerful so support his music uh you can find him on all platforms soundcloud instagram and so forth peace and blessings to everybody peace and blessings man don't we have a pivotal show for y'all today I want everybody to thumb the video up on your way in. It's really important that everybody share this particular video as well. I see people rolling in. Shirley Gonzalez in the building. Young Gene, Robert Clark. Casper's in house. Yes, yes, yes. King C3, terrific Tarsha. Yes, I'm glad y'all catching another show. Now, I believe that this show right here is one of the most important shows that I've done on this platform. I want this show to be a staple in the annals of time. Um, I want this show to be seared into the consciousness of all men and women as well. The importance of fatherhood. You know, I wanna just go ahead and shout out my children whom I love very much, Janiah, Isaiah, Elijah, 
Azaria, I'd like to shout out my children and let you know right now, daddy loves you. And uh, these are the type of things that will be remembered. When they grow up, I want them to see videos like this and say, wow, dad, dad loved his children. Dad loved us. Of course, they see me all the time and they know that, you know, dad loves them. But when you become an adult and you see, because I have young ones, when you become an adult and you see the type of work that's being done from your father, it, it lays the trail, right? Because let me tell you what these scriptures tell us before we bring our, our very special guests in today. Proverbs 20 and 7 says, the just man walketh in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. So this is about fathers having a key component in order to, to thrive, in order to be in our children's lives and raise them properly. We got to have integrity. Integrity goes a long way. It's quite often where our pains that we harbor are often passed down to our sons in particular. So we got to move integral. We got to make sure we're not passing generational curses down. And, you know, I just wanted to really say that as well as the scriptures also tell us. I want to go just we're just going to do a few verses before I bring the guests in. The scriptures also tell us. And we're going to uh, the first we're going to uh, third John chapter one. It says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. See, that's all we want is our children to walk in truth. We want them to be substantiated. Um, we want them to, you know, be on a righteous course. You know, and there's a lot of division being pushed in the media right now to keep fathers out of households and to keep the battle of the sexes going. But the heart of a father goes a long way, a whole, a, a really long way. And we got one more we're going to go to. And this one is real profound right here. Real profound. And that's Proverbs 22 and 6. And it reads, train up a child in the way you will have them go, and they will not depart from the faith. You train up a child in the way you will have them go, and they will not depart from the faith. All right. So this is just some words of encouragement to fathers out there, um, understanding that, you know, we have we have to make sure we're placed in their lives and, and doing what we're supposed to do to take care of our responsibilities. Now, this brother that I'm bringing on, Mr. Matt Pressbury, righteous brother, man. I broke bread with this brother. He's solid 100%. Um, this brother, he has founded the what we call the Black Fathers Foundation, the Facebook group. He's been on, he's been on a Steve Harvey show. He's been on Good Morning America. Uh, this brother has been doing all kind of philanthropy work within the community and really building. And what I really, really respect about this brother's work is the fact that he's pretty much a defense for fathers who are being misrepresented in the media. Because one thing about the media is what they tend to do is they, they promote these negative stereotypes of us melanated men and sometimes people live out those stereotypes and sometimes it's used as a dehumanization method so brothers can be done wrong in family systems and court systems because you have these negative connotations connected to our people so the fact that that brother is standing for justice and righteousness it's just a it's just an utter blessing you know what i'm saying to have him on the show um and you know what i'm gonna be bringing this brother in real soon let's just get the the likes up get the thumbs up on the video let's get it let's get it because we're about to introduce a very a very powerful brother uh stephen gransville thank you for the ten dollar contribution says i appreciate the work thank you family i appreciate it and also dion thank you for becoming a member as well now, with no further ado, ladies and gentlemen, 
with no further ado i'm going to be introducing my guest mr matt pressberry peace up brother peace 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 thanks for having me absolutely welcome to the show welcome to the show i'm sorry the only i just unfortunately God, i just found out that this charger is not charging my phone so i'm oh, hoping okay. i'm hoping this thing doesn't die in the middle of our conversation man. That oh okay uh, hopefully i did not, not realize when i plugged it up that it was not working if it does if it does go out brother we'll just bring you back on in and and this is baltimore's own this is dmv own yes sir no no you know you gotta yeah. get it gotta get it right you said you from dc right yes sir okay yeah see so dc is dmv but right. baltimore is not the dmv <laughs> it's different it's different it's different. It, hey, Baltimore is a land of its own. I ain't going to go on that. Baltimore I love Baltimore. It's a planet though. of its own. It's not even just a <laughs> It's a whole planet of its own. That's a hundred, man. I love Baltimore, though, man. The spirit of the people out there. Hey, the fighters are out there, bro. Yeah, absolutely. And listen, yeah. I didn't I didn't make that rule. Somebody else made it up. I'm just following along. I'm a native Baltimorean, so I gotta go with it. They say Baltimore is not in the DMV. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we, we gotta bring y'all in, man. That's terrible. <laughs> but man, it's it's a blessing to have you on, brother. Man, man, I'm I really telling. appreciate yeah. that. I'm just I'm just bugging. I hate that. I messed up because this charging situation is really throwing me off. I'm I'm kind of upset about that. But let's 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 keep it moving. Long as we got, let's keep it moving. Okay, Lord willing, everything will work out just fine, man. Yes, sir. But man, it's such a blessing to have you on, man. I'm gonna just start Appreciate with it. this, brother. How did you get on the path that you got on to make you pretty much an advocate for black fathers who are being misrepresented in the media? How did this start? So um, I try to give you. Well, I'm, I ain't gonna lie. It's not gonna be a brief version. Let me stop lying. Um, oh, so please. I've been I've been working with fathers for over two decades and i was a young very young father myself uh i was 22 when my ex-wife first got pregnant 23 when my son was born and i just from there i just i loved fatherhood i knew i would before i became a father and it's crazy i tell people i know it was crazy but i was seriously 22 years old planning on having a child like there ain't too many 22 year olds running around especially black men out here that's like right, yeah right. let's let's make this baby like right. no, nah, but I did that, and I loved every second of it of, of of being a father from day one. And I got into a situation where we we were married for four years, had two children together, and it it just really wasn't working out from the jump for real. So eventually, she came, my ex wife came home, said this not working out, and that was the end. I was trying to hold on and all that, you know. I really wanted to stay for my kids and so on and so forth, but I knew the situation just wasn't what it should be and it really wasn't beneficial for my kids to even try to fight to stay together you know what i'm saying so moved out and i took my my sons i came back the next day after she asked me to leave and i, I got my sons i said i'm never not gonna be in their lives and they and they have been with me ever since i married not very long after and we've since had two more children so during that period especially going through the divorce but even prior to, because I, I started out my work in Head Start with my, my work with children when I got into the education field and I was part of the um, God, male, the male involvement program from the jump. Right. So I'm doing that work. That's how I very first started really working with fathers. And right. I, I did other things. I got into the public school system. I started groups when I was in the public school system. And at the same time, I was inviting people when I first got on Facebook. I would invite people out, just throw something out there. Oh, it's nice. Let's go to the park. Let's meet up, that kind of thing. Because I just really wanted to have, I wanted to have a way, number one, for fathers to be connected because I know that so many of us really, like even when we get together with our boys, we wouldn't talk about fatherhood and that sort of stuff. And a lot of us dealt with stuff that we were going through and mm -hmm. felt like we were the only ones going through it just because we didn't have those kinds of conversations. So right. I wanted, I was very intentional in working to create uh lanes and avenues where we could come together for that specific purpose uh so 
every chance I got, I would do that. And on Facebook, I was doing that, inviting people out and stuff. And then it, it dawned on me. I hadn't been on Facebook long. And it dawned on me just how much you, you, you look around and you see, A, you look at stuff called parenting or parents and stuff like that. And 99% of the stuff that was in it, the pictures, the people that were in it, are mothers, right? So we're not being represented, period, as fathers. And then the 1% that was fathers, they were white or Asian, you know? So I wasn't yeah. seeing myself. I wasn't seeing other brothers. The brothers that I would see when I would take my kids to the playground and I would see all of them at the playground, when I would go take my kids to school and I would see the brothers taking their kids and picking them up from school, I didn't see them in mainstream media. And I and I knew something had to change because the only time I did see people that looked like me in mainstream media, they was getting locked up for something. You know, it was always something negative. So I took it upon myself to create this space and I asked people, to send pictures of themselves, uh, videos, or even just type up a post and say something that they did with their kids and that sort of thing. And really it just, it, it took off from there. It was a really slow grind, but um, it, it it is definitely exploded within our like the sixth year. I think we got media coverage, right. mainstream media, and right. it really took off from there. Absolutely. I, I seen you on a, on a Steve Harvey show, you on Good Morning America. How, listen, put us in that place where you got that call like yo i'm about to be on steve harvey because of this space i created here like how how did that go i'm I'm real curious about that so it's it's it's, it's amazing um i was really shocked I'm, I'm gonna tell you the story this is the story right here i was at work i was in a classroom and somebody came to the classroom and told me call my sister-in-law my wife's sister and I was like, oh, love, what's going on here? And then they said it was something about a producer from Steve Harvey. And I, I felt like I was being pumped or something. Like, it didn't feel like it was real, that they were reaching out to me. I had made no effort. I didn't reach out to them or anything. And then what I right. found out, so I, I, I leave out the classroom. I'm standing in the hallway making a phone call. Now, I'm going to tell everybody, I was a parent. So I didn't leave the kids alone. There was a teacher in the classroom. <laughs> right. And I went out in the hallway, and I was on the phone. And um, I ended up talking um connecting and getting the whole story and then what i had to do from there is submit a brief uh video that i sent in to the producer to talk about who i am and what i do and all of that sort of stuff but man it was it was a real surreal experience and it, it was even made even more so by the fact that afterwards after people saw me on there they hit me up like, oh, can you talk to such and such? And I've been trying to get on Steve Harvey for all of this time. And I'm like, you know, what? it really, it really honestly, truly fell in my lap. So it was a blessing because I didn't have to make any initial effort to, to, to make this happen. So, yeah, that means the Lord's hands was in it, man. Yes, that, sir. And that yes, should sir. be influential to those who are, you know, making spaces for themselves on social media. Listen, that you never know who's watching. You never know who's getting influenced by what you're doing. So yep. that's a blessing. Also, man, that was six years ago. And I believe you were around 20,000 followers on Facebook. Now you well over exceeded that uh, at this point. And also last year, I seen that you all, Black Fathers Foundation, actually hosted the 2021 BET Awards. I mean, the gala, the galas which you hosted, right? Yeah, so that just just a correction. That was in that was the end of 2019. Okay, was, okay, it was listed on the site. Okay, okay, the end that of was yeah, when we first that was we first got started. We I was in a, a Facebook program, and they part of the program was they give you funding to uh, create your own program or whatever you wanted to do. It could be a one day event. It could be whatever. So what I decided to do was to fund the foundation and really started and we were advised to have this gala as a real coming out party so it, it was an awesome event we we um i had it's, and it's interesting this wasn't planned or anything but let me show you this black dad's a dope if y'all can keep that That's um, this is a, i gotta get one like, of those this is a t-shirt that actually was given out at uh the bet brunch so i was invited to bring brothers to the BT father and son brunch that they had in New York in that year. So I took, I took a group up on, we had a couple of vans. We went up to Brooklyn and uh, some of the other members in the group who lived in New York came and met us at the brunch and everything. It was hosted by BET and Procter and Gamble. So that process, the person, 
who contacted me about that, I stayed in touch with him and he actually got us funding. So BET co-sponsored the gala. So that's how, that's how that worked out. That's dope. Hey, that's big yeah. for the culture right there, man. So I'm pretty sure you got to bump shoulders with some, some pretty reputable figures there. And um, you, you care to share how the atmosphere was uh, of the gala? Just Oh just man. <laughs> The gala was phenomenal. We had a great time, man. It was a beautiful event. And I'm proud to say that every single vendor and everyone that we paid and dealt with was a black individual. So that was that made it feel even better. Now, the only difference, like we had it at the Reginald Lewis Museum, which is not necessarily owned by black people, but it is the, you know, the, the African-American History and Culture Museum from Maryland. So we did it there. It was a beautiful event. And you can see if you I know you said you're familiar with Baltimore. So coming down 83, when you're going downtown right. and you see the Lewis Museum on the left side, there's mm -hmm. a picture that I have. If you you might have seen it if you've gone through any of the pictures and stuff, where we had our the screen that was in um in the room that we were in holding the gala, you can mm -hmm. actually see it when you were coming down 83. When somebody showed me a picture of that, I was like, Mama, we made it, man. <laughs> <laughs> We That's made it. You, can, you can see us shining on 83, brother. I, I appreciated that so much, but it was a beautiful atmosphere and we can't wait to replicate it and, and take it even further. What, right. what happened, COVID hit, of course, right after that. So that was September of 2019. So, you right. know, flip a couple months later, we in March of 2020 and everything pretty much shut down at that point. Right. True that. Well, listen, brother, let me ask you this. In all your years of working in education, along with your years with working with various fathers um, around the country, what would you say is something that is a reoccurring theme in our community in particular that, you know, you care to, to bring some insight, a, a, a flaw, a, a something that seems to be a hindrance to us as fathers? What, what would be that reoccurring thing? Is it is it the court system? Is it... Um, you know the family court system and if it is you know just is could you offer any uh where am i getting at here is it possible you can offer any like uh advice for fathers who may be experiencing any difficulties in in a in a breakup or, or anything like that mm -hmm. no doubt about it so the number one part of me number one thing i would say i feel like for us oftentimes we suffer due to a lack of information and that is part of why I love the group and also why I created it so that we can be resources to each other because there are people out there who have gone through situations and there are other people who are starting to go through it and they can glean from those who, veterans, you know, who, who have that knowledge. And early on in the group, that showed, it, it really manifested when we had a brother who was going to court. This was the first case I saw where he was going to court for custody and he ended up um, getting, I want to say joint, if not full, it was joint custody of his, of his son. So then he came back and from there, that really within the group itself, that really set the precedent to say, look, number one, this can be done. So that's the first thing you have to believe it can be done. And when you see an example, then you realize within yourself, because a lot of us are out there and we don't believe it because we've never seen it. And we hear all of this stuff or oh, the courts are against us, the courts are against us. And that's true. I don't deny it. I've, I've, Yep. seen and heard about that in many cases i've lived through it in, in in some you know to some degree so i understand how it is but the thing is what i always tell people is that you can't if you go into a boxing ring you know what that boxer is trying to do to you you know what your opponent is trying to do to you and the question is do you go in there ill prepared do you go in there with your hands down or do you study right. this guy do you know what he's going to do do you come in there with a battle plan so you can defeat this guy and a lot of times we don't have that plan when we go into the court and we just feel like, oh, it should be this way because this is the right thing. But yep. they don't care about the right thing. Honestly, they can say in the best interest of the child all they want. But that is not the truth. We've seen that time and time again, that that a lot of judges make decisions that aren't really in the best interest of the child. So we have yep. to get that. We have to have that confidence that we can do it. And we have to have the information to know how to do it how to prepare, what do we need to know? What is what is the law here? What am I trying to work with? What forces are working against me? How do I need to dress? How do I need to talk? It's, it's almost like, you know, you got to kind of play the game, right? Because exactly. if you're going there a certain way, you're bound to lose. So it's it's, yeah. it's, it's it's like a game to them because 
from what I have heard and and somewhat experienced too. I went through a divorce and you know all of that sort of stuff. So I've seen some of it too. A lot of these judges don't, they're just trying to get through, right? Get through. Oh, I see this, boom, boom, boom. We're gonna do this. Bam, you paying this much, get out my court, get out my face, so on and so forth. And it it, it the the thing about it too that adds to it is us being black men, right? So right. you got racist judges you're dealing with, uh, sexist judges and women sometimes, and you know, yeah. all of that sort of stuff. So the deck to a large extent is stacked against us. So we have to get that information. So whether it's going to court, whether it's dealing with child support, whether it's dealing with the police come to your house for this and that, she said this, she claimed you did that. The information is the key and the experience to know that, okay, I can, I can do, I don't have to get in my feelings. I don't have to get frustrated. And the worst thing you can do is really exhibit that kind of frustration to give her a reason, yep. you know what I mean? And, to, and again, give the police a reason like, oh yeah, this, this guy, he's just this, he's a hothead. He's all this. So yep. we got to really work at the same time to keep all of that in mind, maintain our cool, you know, as, as, as best we can and document everything. Yep. Document it all. Cause that is a saving grace when you, and I'm telling people, save all your receipts, save text messages. If she wilding out on you on the phone, don't, don't return that fire. Just yep. take a screenshot and That's take it into court stuff. with you. You know, all of that kind of stuff is 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 really what we need to know. So those are the recurring things. A lot of times we just get in our emotion as much as we say uh, we're logical and women are emotional. Nah, we 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 get really emotional as men. We definitely do, especially when it comes to our kids. And we yep. when we feel like we're doing the right thing, we feel like we're being wronged. It's easy to let your emotions get the best of you. I know that for a fact, right? Right. So I know it's not easy. It's easier said than done, but that's the thing that it really takes to get through that. And then the other thing outside of that is really the support that we get from one another. So when you feel like you're going through it alone, it's a whole different world. I just talked to somebody yesterday about something else, not about fatherhood or anything, but it just makes a difference when, when people, when you can kind of like commiserate and, and you know, like, I, you know, it's a challenge, but it's not just on me. God ain't just picking on me. It's this is something that just right. happens to, to people, you know, and this is what yep. I gotta deal with. So I have to I have to figure out the best way to work around it and handle it. Cause ultimately what you gotta keep in mind is that no matter what anybody else does, no matter what the judge does, no matter what your baby mother does, none of that stuff, you still have to maintain, you still have to be an example for your kids and show them how they're supposed to handle stuff with grace. So that's that's the yep. main thing you really gotta keep in mind. Yes. And uh, that's that's powerful, brother. That's powerful advice right there. And I'm speaking as an individual as well who fought, you know, a custody battle nearly two years. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to lie with my with my experience. It was uh, traumatic. I, I mean, it was uh, I wasn't prepared. Let's just put it that way. I wasn't prepared. A lot of times us brothers, we go into situations like that um, and we're not looking at that person on the other side of the table or, you know, the defendant, because in my case, I was the plaintiff. You know, I'm mm -hmm. filing for this. I want to be in their lives. You're not thinking that that other person on the other side is an enemy. You're not thinking you're going to war with a person. You're thinking, I just want to be a father. Yeah. You're thinking, oh, it's war time. It, it's, it's a battle. I'm going to do, I'm going to make this as difficult as possible for you. And, and, and you know, and I want to put this message out here for all the young ladies out there. You may have issues with your child's father. It may not have worked out the way you wanted it to work out. But at the end of the day, you're doing your children a major disservice because you know who gets paid? The lawyers, mm -hmm. the judges, that system gets paid. Yep. And all of that money that you're putting into that system, that's your children's money. You're literally, instead of being cooperative with that, that man who wants to be there, and it seems like in our culture, it's always the fathers who actually want to be there. Mm -hmm. but instead of being cooperative, you're really just wasting resources um, and you're just drawing a wedge between a father and child. So, you know, that's just something that we got to get right in our community. And brothers, you got to be disciplined, too. We got to take precautions like, um, you know, be careful what woman you deal with. You know, we can't be out here, whoring, you know, whoremongering and not expecting negative results. But um yeah, I just wanted to add that sentiment. Yeah, well. no, I appreciate that because that's something that I definitely um, that's that's a message that I definitely repeat. And I really want to find more effective ways to get that through to young people before they even become fathers, because mm -hmm. 
it's like an analogy that I use. It's like if you're if you're shooting, you might be the worst basketball player in the world, but if you keep shooting at that hoop enough times, eventually that thing's going to go in, right? So yeah. if you're laying down with that woman, you could be wearing all the rubbers you want. You can She can be doing all the things, but eventually this is how babies are made. They're not made by playing the PlayStation. They're not made <laughs> by, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So this is how it happens. So you have to think about that. You might just want to get that quick one off or whatever and think, oh, I'm just going to go about my business. But next thing you know, you you stuck for the next two decades. Yep. So what one thing that's that's one thing that I definitely say is be as careful as possible. Don't just be running around and you know with, with any and everybody. And then even when you get with somebody that you that you think, okay, this might this might be cool, this might work out or whatever, you still gotta really work to get an understanding of where their head is at and right. have a discussion. That's the thing that we really don't do too much but like like i said for me like yeah i, I went in i was like yeah we're gonna make this baby and we talked about it and all of that sort of stuff and she still ended up flipping the script on me and and abandoning them when we got divorced but wow. at least you need to have that conversation because one thing people got to know people change it's one thing if yeah. you if you if you if you just go knock somebody up and she's already crazy and she's this and that then there's only so much you can expect but a lot of us, we do make conscious decisions to find somebody we think we're going to be with forever. That's going to be our, you know, soulmate till we die and so on and so forth. But stuff happens. So you want to kind of try to get at least some idea. Hey, if we if we had this baby and we do go our separate ways, how are we going to be? How are we going to handle this? Try to get a plan in place and something that you both stick to and go from there. And if things switch up, you can say, hey, I tried. You know, we tried, we did talk about it. This wasn't just exactly something straight out the blue, but that's, that's what I advise everybody. Like I, I, I love my kids to death. I really, really do, but I wouldn't want to have them and be in a situation. Like I said, I tried to stay with my ex-wife, even when she was saying she wanted to get divorced, I wanted to stay for the kids because I just didn't want them to be in split households and and i didn't even want to suffer myself like i didn't want to wake up a single day and not walk into their bedroom and see them laying in their beds you know and wake them up for school right. or go a single night without putting them to bed so that's what a lot of us struggle with so is is you want to try as much as possible to make the best decisions you can in in advance and then like i say stuff happens and then you deal with that as it happens you know absolutely a hundred percent so we got to exercise emotional intelligence as brothers um, and, you know, physical intelligence as well, man. No doubt. Uh, definitely vet these women. Do what it is you're supposed to be doing. Find out her background. What how was she raised? Was she raised in a two parent household? You know, th things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And um, now with some of the in, in the education field you work in, um, have you experienced? I would say youth. With that came up with no fathers in the household, and could you point to the difference of what you see in them, uh, opposed to you know, a family that has the father there? So, what I what I will say, I've I've seen personally is them attaching themselves to me, of course, that you know, I become that father figure to to so many who don't have their fathers around. Now, outside of that, I know there are stats that say, you know, what, what children do and don't do when the father's not around. As far as that's concerned, I never really paid enough attention to say, to try to really figure out, okay, this one doesn't have the father and this is what is a, as a result, you know, or a consequence right, right. or whatever of them not having their father around. What, what I did was really, I took everybody as an individual and I still do. And, mm -hmm work with them to try to help them be the best they can be regardless of their situation i have seen some situations where i know for sure it's not the easiest thing on the child to not have that solid father figure in their lives but at the same time a lot of my students had other people stepping up you know whether it was might have been mom's boyfriend might have been an uncle or older brother grandfather we had a lot of father figures i have a, a a mentee of mine who i need to talk to and i'm gonna have some strong words for this boy because he ain't called me in months but anyway so a mentee right. of mine who was actually a kindergarten student of mine he's now in high school 
and I've, I've brought him and some of his old classmates under my wing. But his father had um, passed away, had another one whose father had passed away early. And they were in my little crew. I used to call them my two live crew because they would just they would just turn up. These guys were off the charts. So I, I don't know if that was a result of not having their father around or they were just like, wow. But right. whatever the cause was, these were some wild boys. And I really right. wanted to take them under my wing. And I was very intentional about that. And I've been able to watch them grow and progress and do great things. But both of them, or two out of the three, I should say, their fathers had um, passed away early. So I right. really became that father figure in their lives. So that's the, the biggest thing is is the, the, the clinginess. You can, you can feel it. You can tell right. when they don't have that father in the household and really in their lives solidly, then right. I automatically become that. <laughs> and they look at they looking for that void. And that yes, that's an that you a pillar in the community like that, where you can actually, you know, minister and cater to the youth and help yes. these brothers out because that's needed. We really need that in our community, brothers like yourself that step up. No and, doubt. Let me tell you yeah. something real quick. Before yeah. the before I took them out for the first time. I took them to uh Terps basketball game down in College Park. Mm -hmm. And I'm in I'm in their classroom because they had they were in probably in the second grade. They weren't in my class at the time. I think they were in the second grade. And one of the teachers, well, I could not stand this lady. But anyway, so she comes in and she's like, Well, why are you taking them? They always in trouble and so on and so forth. And I say, you know what? That's exactly why I'm taking them. Because they exactly. need this. They need that experience. They need that exposure. They need to sit with me with you know with a man with a solid man and sit with me and they need to just have fun and 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 be told that it's it's not okay to get in trouble but that don't mean we're gonna hold it against you forever plus we give you stuff to aspire to so the next time i take you out it's gonna be because i see that your grades have improved or your attendance has improved or something like that so then you give them that incentive but what i told this lady i said man if if, if god only blessed us when we were doing everything right Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have nothing. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> hey, that's a powerful message right yeah. there. So, and you know, I, I want to also speak to to a lot of fathers out there who I would say may be slacking. They they have children out here, and um, you know, they're not really stepping up to the table because yeah. it's it's an honor and a blessing to have brothers like you in the community that do what you do, but some of these fathers also, you know, we, we I like to hold them accountable as yeah. well. Uh, I like I like to go to a scripture in Matthew, Matthew chapter seven, verse nine says, or oh, what man is there of you whom his son asks bread? Will he give him a stone? Meaning like what type of man are you if your son is seeking bread? He's seeking life. He needs that from his father. But you give him a stone in return. You're not giving him where he you know what he needs to actually be successful in life to to be able to uh you know function in society because what end up happening is when we raise when we allow just the single mother to raise the son more often than not what end up happening is yeah the the, the young man may grow up to be masculine but he may have fem a, a feminine emotions the emotions of a woman the masculinity of a man is the reason why you seeing all of the bullets spraying out here mm -hmm. because there's no emotional intelligence being instilled up. Yeah. There's certain principles as a man that we're supposed to be putting into, into our sons in particular. And I'm just speaking directly towards the sons, but what would you say to the father? Now here's my question for you. What would you say to the fathers who may have tried, may have had a, a difficult time with the child's mother, so on and so forth. And, Let's say they just they gave up. They blamed her. They gave up. What would you what message would you say to them in your in your professional uh, field? So there's there's no one thing that I could really say. Like I I would really want to understand the case because there mm -hmm. are two things that I see from time to time, and one is the the man who has not legitimately made the effort and who has made a bunch of excuses. And then there is the man who has made every effort he could and been thwarted every every time he tried, you know. And there are some people who I have heard from and even heard about who have gotten to the point where for their own 
sanity so they didn't lose their minds, mm-hmm. they have taken a step back and really taken their hands off of it. And right. I, I can understand that. And as much as I want to say, no, you need to keep going. You got to keep fighting for your child. You got to keep fighting. But you won't be any good to you. You got to be good to yourself first. Right. Because yep. if you if you if you go crazy, then what good are you to the children anyway? If you you know, you lose your mind. And I've, I've heard about fathers even taking their lives because the stress of fighting has just gotten to them so badly. So I can't just say one thing but what i will say to fathers who have really not legitimately made a solid effort is that you definitely should Mm -hmm. make every effort you can because a lot of us a lot of us give up before we even start the fight before the before the bell even rings we got our hands down in the boxing ring like i can't i can't win anyway so why try you know you turn around your man is just throwing in the towel before you know before right. the thing even starts, you know? So that's that's the thing. You have to really legitimately work and, 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 and fight because it is, just like you said, I remember one time when I said on Facebook, I was like, I really don't like this term fight and so on and so forth, but I haven't had the experience that other people had and other people chimed in and they said, look, brother, when you go through this, you legitimately feel, just like you said, you legitimately feel like you are at war. There is a combatant that's really trying to destroy you, you know, in, in some right. cases, I'm not hardly saying all women are like that or anything like that. Right. But in some cases you get into that court and they're really trying to break you, you know? It's so nice. I had yeah. to, I had to really take that in because I only know what I know. And I'm going to admit, if I don't know something, if it's not my truth, it's not my experience, I'm not going to pretend that it is. I, right. I don't know. I've done what I've done, you know, and I accept and respect everybody else's truth about what they've been through. But I do know at the same time there are some brothers who are not making that effort that and they and they and they need to start. And then the other thing is for the brothers who have made that effort and they really feel like they're at their wit's end, I would say definitely be a part of some support system, whether it's the Black Fathers group or something else like that, because it it will help to keep you encouraged. We have fathers in there who don't have access to their children right now, but mm. they still are encouraged by the posts that they see and everything else. So at, at, at some point, there's a distinct possibility that they may decide that that click may come back on or that, you know, that switch may turn on and they're like, you know what, let me, let me try this again. Let me, let me try to reconnect. Let me reach out. Or you get to the point where that child turns 18 and the parent is not in control of how that child moves. And then you reach out to that child. But, exactly. you know, I, I, I say try to do whatever it takes short of really driving yourself to the mental institution or to the grave, you know, right. outside of that. Man, that's that's actually some very powerful advice. And um, it was a, it was sometime last year when I when I went through my custody battle and being in the position that I am being on social media and things of that nature, uh, luckily, and blessing, not only want to use luck, it was it was the Lord himself, you know, blessing me with the resources that I needed to, to fight the way I fought. But even even in that instance, um, I would tell you now that advice you just gave about there's times where you got to you do definitely have to scale back. I'm telling mm-hmm. you right now, uh, you definitely have to scale back. Um, and you know the Lord, the Lord sees all. He don't like ugly either. Yeah. A person is doing something that's detrimental to the children by you know causing a wedge between father and, and children. Listen, the Lord, He's gonna reconcile all of that eventually. One thing about it is, man, we just gotta keep integrity, keep our yeah. hearts right. Yeah. You may run out of resources. You may need to establish yourself to get somewhere before you can do that fight. But that that's powerful advice right there, brother. I just wanted to, to point that out. Yeah. And, and you're doing great works within the community. I want I want everybody to know how they can support what you do as well. Oh, I'm right. So the first thing, if you are if you are a black man yourself, whether you've had children yet or not, you are welcome to join the Black Fathers group on Facebook and everyone. So this is a private group for men only everyone is invited to join black fathers and company so please go over there and join um we have women in the group particularly black women but like i said it's not limited to anybody but it's a great place where we're still highlighting 
black men who are doing the thing, sharing stories, pictures, and all of that stuff. And within the open group, everybody gets to see and support that. The other thing is our website, blackfathersfoundation.org. We have our shop. We have our merchandise on there. So please go and, and, and grab some merch and represent for, for right. black fathers all across the world. And if you name that again, I want y'all to put that in the chat, my moderators, if you can. Blackfathersfoundation.org. Blackfathersfoundation.org, ladies and gentlemen, put that in the yep. chat. Moderator. That's our website, so please go check it out. We have again our shop on there and other information about things that we do, and our uh, donate page. So that that's the real important way right now because, I and I have to do some modifications on the website and update a little bit and put some stuff in there. But we are now really seeking funds for our overall operating fund for 2023 and mm -hmm. specifically for our urgent need fund for fathers and what we do for with that we've been helping very loosely we've been providing aid to fathers um over this past really two years in real emergent type situations bills do uh need food to put in the fridge gas in the car and anything like that where we can help support men and and help to make them uh he, um yeah foundation yes thank you um help them to really not feel like they're failing their kids that's the big thing that just recurs in my mind like even today for example i i, I don't want to you know be too long-winded or whatever but even today my daughter asked me to help her get tickets she she loves k-pop she's a fiend for these for these little korean boys um so she wanted to go to a concert now last year she asked me to do this and i got on there in time and everything like that and as soon as i jumped on like the tickets were sky high and we just couldn't afford them. And I felt like I had failed her. Right. And, and, you know, the things I deal with with my mental situation and all that, I really flipped. Um, and it just, it just wasn't pretty. Right. So today I'm sitting there like, Lord, I really want to get this little girl, these tickets. That's all she want to do is go to these concerts. And if I don't, if I don't get her these tickets, I'm going to feel like I failed her. And that's what a lot of fathers are faced with, not with concert tickets, but with food, putting food in the fridge for the kids, with being able to clothe the kids, with a lot of things that people don't necessarily understand and take for granted. And they think that, oh, we're men, we just do, right? We mm -hmm. just make it happen. We can just pull it out of thin air and make it happen. But that's not always the case. There are many men who are trying with all their might. There are men who are working and they just aren't making enough money. So people talk yeah. about, oh, if a man don't work, he don't eat. But what about the ones that are working and still can't afford to eat? We're in a recession. Yeah. You know, exactly. everything went up except our paychecks. Right. So right. you have people who are legitimately struggling. And for us, I can only speak for myself as a man because I've never been a woman. But I know as a man, for the person who is really expected from from externally and internally, there's a pressure to provide. So right. there are a lot of men who are going under because they just don't have it to provide for their children. And mm -hmm. a lot of men are not willing to reach out. So I know that when we get an email or we get a message and we have a man who's asking us for assistance, I'm like, I know this is his last straw. He's probably tried everything else in his yep. power to make it happen before he came to us. This was his last resort. So I feel overwhelmingly um responsible for helping this man as much as i can so all of that is really dependent on the funding that we receive of course yes we go for grants and all of that but it's really really about these individual donations that support us and so we have a uh, we have a page on our site for the donations we have several people who do them monthly so we see that coming in every month and i truly appreciate that and that is how Absolutely. we're able how we're able to serve other fathers. And that's that's exactly what we do. Just uh, help the father yesterday with the internet bill. You know, his son is is relying, everybody in the house, of course, relying on the internet, but his son especially. So we helped him get the internet back on and we're working to try to help him get into the program where they have the, the reduced or the free internet service if we can get that. But he wouldn't have been able to even get that far had we not helped him pay this bill because he had no other way to do it. And they weren't going to, let him get in the program until he paid the bill down and got his service restored. So we did that yesterday. It's just all types of things. But the, the biggest thing, it all centers around, one, really filling in those gaps and helping fathers 
to never have to feel like failures for their children, right? Two, really networking with other organizations that serve fathers and just other people being on podcasts to share the message, working with other groups that help fathers. It's all about that building a network because we will always, always, always be stronger together than we are apart. Absolutely. I could go out here and I could just be like, yeah, I'm the man. I'm at Zuckerberg. I sat with Steve Harvey. I did this. I did that. Right. But I'm only going to get a certain place by myself. But when I get with my brothers and there's somebody across town who's doing this and somebody who's doing this and all of that, we're rising together. And that's how I look at it. And then the third piece really is the content. So, again, being on shows, talking about what we do, creating our own shows. Uh, we partnered with the Urban Dads. And we're getting ready to do a podcast with with four four black men who are all fathers doing a podcast together. It's going to be something. So I'm excited about that. So all of those kinds of avenues. So people can follow us on all our socials. That would help tremendously. Uh, people can go shop on our site. People can donate. That would definitely help tremendously. And and subscribe to our newsletter, which we should be putting out sometime soon i need to get on top of that but yeah uh, th those are the main ways and just really you know stay connected to the things that we're doing if you know any way that you may be of service you want to volunteer we have events coming up and all of those sorts of things people can just talk to me and then the the, the one thing that i really really need is some warm intros to some people with some money so yeah <laughs> you know what i'm saying I, I'm, I'm gonna keep it a buck you you know i'm trying I'm, I'm i'm working networking from the day i came down here we've been my wife and i my, our youngest two children have been in the atlanta metropolitan area for just over a year now and mm -hmm. i'm just constantly working networking to meet people and get in some doors so i can i can give my spiel and tell people you know what what we're able to do to help black men and how it can be a win-win situation so That's for anybody true that runs a business that may want to contribute or works at a business that may want to contribute. And you can link me with the person I need to talk to. I'm all is. Absolutely. Oh, you already know we're going to build together, brother. Yes, I'm, sir. Over, I'm over here thinking how new breed dot love and we can implement the love note in with, with your organization somehow right. to get people over so we can actually drive traffic both ways. That's, that's what my, that's what my mind. Yeah. Cause uh, yeah. I'm going to have to call Brandon and, and we talk about that. And uh, make make something happen because if we all connected, man, that that's power in that. Exactly. And, exactly. And, and I, I'm just. Through. I know you see it. You. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you see it. I, I've seen it so much, especially in Baltimore. Is is just people who are like just really on their own stuff. People working in silos. People working in cliques. Like, nah, we don't fool with y'all over there. Stay right. on that side, kind of deal. Oh, yeah. And I I just ain't never been like that. Like, cause I just really understand that. Unless you you coming to do me harm, if you got the same agenda that I got and we both trying to get to the same place, even if we don't take the same street, we still get into the same destination. So we need we need to help each other. If I if I got to put some gas in your car for us to get there, then so be it. That's what I'm going to do. But I don't need the credit. I don't need you to, you know, to recognize me in the street. I don't I don't need none of that. My, th my thing is the, the 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 blessings I get is when fathers thank me for what I've been able to do for them. And I can right. see how they're winning. Now you can get to work. You can you can get that paycheck and support your kids when you couldn't get there before. You can mm -hmm. put food in their bellies when you couldn't get there, when you couldn't do that before. That's all I need, man. I just wanna see black men win, period. Exactly. Yeah, and, and ladies and gentlemen, y'all see the foundation, y'all see the website. Support this website, support this brother and what he's doing. He's helping fathers in their time of need. We don't have too many support groups for men in general. So just to have this take off the way it has, this brother has, he has the notoriety, he has the 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 position to to actually open up doors, and he's in which that means he's been entrusted, he's been entrusted with finances. He's 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 made these things manifest already. He, it's shown what he's done. You know his resume pretty much speaks for itself. So you would know that your contributions are going towards helping black fathers. So. You know, support your interests, support your nation, because it's going to take we, we talk a lot about nation building over here. Um, and what it's going to take is for our fathers to have a decent mental state, have, uh, you know, be in the children's lives and have a group, a support group to actually get through these these situations. Because if the fathers of the nation are all over the place and can't focus and can't function because of how 
whether it be the family system or the media portraying us a certain way if we can't function we we can never birth we can never bring in the birth of this this nation that we're trying to build so this is the this is the groundwork right here and if you're a father if you're a mother if doesn't matter support this type of content support it i appreciate it brother and 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 once again just to reiterate like we just I, I just keep I say the same thing over and over because it's just it's, it's on my heart and it's the truth and I just speak from my heart and I'm in this from day one to help black men succeed which translates to helping black families succeed which translates to helping our community succeed it all goes together hand in hand so we we, we all rise together we all win together that's what it's about so just to just to, 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 to piggyback on what you're saying if you support it's definitely going to the cause to do the work for what we're trying to do to help as many black men across this country to stay whole to stay sane because we're going to get into that as well we're going to get into partnering with organizations to work on mental health i stand here as a person who still to this day deals with depression and anxiety i've tried to take my life twice you know it's just it's that stress of being a black man in america and okay. raising kids and you got to worry every day when they go out of here i got three sons when they go out of here, what is going to happen to them if they get in an interaction with the police? And it's just it's 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 a stressful environment that we're dealing in. So we have to recognize that and understand that. And we can't as men, we can't keep pretending to be OK. We can't just tell people we're OK and keep wearing this mask and acting like everything is all right. I always right. say it, it, it takes more courage to be vulnerable than it does to hide. We talk okay. about, you know, strong. I got to be strong. I can't show. No, brother, you're yeah. stronger. You're stronger when you're actually being vulnerable and you're letting your kids understand as long as they can process. I mean, I ain't telling a two year old. Yeah, I try right. to kill myself. yo. But, right. um, right. you know, when your kids are old enough to, to, to process it, they should be able to understand what you're going through. And to me, I really feel like it makes my kid. I think we have a better relationship when mm -hmm. they understand what i'm going through because they actually support me in that they're like right. dad you, you you need some time to yourself you need to go do this you need to go sit down and smoke a cigar or whatever you know that sort of thing then then go do that dad but if i'm hiding from them then they won't understand yep. why my dad all grumpy why is he like this why is he like that right yelling at you know that sort of thing so to me it takes a lot more strength to, to 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 be vulnerable and to open up to people than it does to hide so right yeah. that's real talk and that's why yeah. I, quite often man I, I try to open up about my experiences without you know throwing no case numbers out there nothing yeah. like that but i tell you man brothers uh you got to be encouraged um and, and speaking of mental health like even to this day with two of my children i'm still it's still anytime somebody says something you're going back to court so mm -hmm. it's like it ain't like if you, let's say hypothetically you win visitation or joint custody all it takes is that other that other party involved yeah to say something yeah. now you're fighting all over again and it's tiring yeah. um so as men man we need to be able to build with each other and talk about this i know yes. brothers i know brothers that you know they hurt every day i mean every single day um i don't think a lot of people understand the pain that comes with um not being able to see your children right. I, I wonder a lot of a lot of ladies couldn't imagine somebody taking your child yeah and not seeing them. men feel it too but yeah. we have to put on this stoicism they're not there on, on, on the in the nights the middle of the night when a brother can't see his kids and he's thinking about him he's looking at mm -hmm. photos of him and tears is raining down and he's he's hurt it hurts it's painful yeah they i don't think they can wrap their mind around the love and the heart of a dad no so, and only us brothers can so we that's why we got to come together to, to discuss these things no doubt about it and then the other part of it is you have a lot of people out here women and men because i just saw a post yesterday which was like wild um but you have a lot of women especially out here who don't uh respect and acknowledge people's truths and they will they will deny it like to you like no nah, that's not yeah. real you you just you just a deadbeat you just don't want no you don't understand what i had to go through to you know to to be in this point where i'm like yeah i'm going to step take a step back and that's that's a lot of what happens we we get fear fearful about even trying to take our hands off of it because we don't want to get judged 
as a deadbeat because that's the first thing that turned around. Oh, you just gave up. You don't care about them kids, so on and so forth. And you get some, you get some brothers that cry wolf, right? Mm -hmm. And then that messes it up for the other brothers because then the other people are like, well, he was full of it. He did this, so you probably right. phony too. And a lot, there are a lot of people out there who just don't believe that we actually, as men, suffer like we do. They just that whole, you know, man up, suck it up kind of deal that right. that we have in this society. People take it for granted that we really go through these things and we really love our children as much as we do. And that's what I've always wanted to show in everything I've done is that we are like everybody else. Yes, I understand this this label of black you know it's a social construct so i call myself black and i and i am a black man primarily because that's what society has deemed and that's how society looks at me when i'm in the united states I, i'm not looked at like i'm everybody else like i'm this person and that person we are separated however in 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 the inside in the heart of it we we are human beings right exactly. so regardless black white hispanic Asian, whatever it is, as a father, you love your children inherently. No matter what you go through, even if you walk away, that love, that love doesn't die. I don't believe there's a man in this world that mm. can create a child and 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 know that child to any extent and not love that child. Even if they don't necessarily make an effort to be in their lives, they still love. That love is there. So whatever you have to go through, it has to be within you to really want to make the effort at that point, you know what I'm saying? Right. But we love our kids just like anybody else and we'll die for them, we'll do whatever it takes. And that's what I really want people to understand. Don't, 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 don't keep stereotyping us as black men and having this mythology that all of us are like uh, Mr. Nick Cannon over there. You know, we, we, we're not all that way at all. This is one person and I don't knock that man. I don't have nothing to do with what he does with his kids. It's mm -hmm. his money, it's his time, that's on him. But you know what I'm saying, whereas people have that thing like, oh, he's just making babies everywhere. He's doing this. He can't possibly all that. So then, you know, they, they look and think that is how we all are. And it's, it's, right. it's just not not the case. We definitely got to kill that whole deadbeat daddy phrase. Yes. You got to kill that whole thing and stop attaching it to us. Yep. That's, that's, that's not. Listen, when we talk about history. Look at what happened to our people. Man. Yes, sir. I mean, we were we were we were the bucks. We were from slavery. They had us. Oh, you go in that barn, you deal with her. Then they would they would actually sell the children off into captivity, yes. separate the man and woman. This is what happened to our people is deep rooted. Yes, so sir. These labels and these these negative condemnations and stereotypes moving forward, let's kill all of that because mm -hmm. that's feeding into the B system. That's feeding yes. into what they have done to us as people. So, man, that's real powerful talk, man. And the other thing that we have to kill is, 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 or are, I should say, these generalizations. You know what I'm saying? That's why I keep, I keep pushing, talking to people as, as individuals, because far too often we make these generalizations based on, we might've seen one guy who ain't taking care of his kids. So mm -hmm. then it's like, oh, black men don't take care of their kids because you seen one person who ain't doing right. Now you just want to throw the blanket over all of us. We got to stop doing that because it makes it it makes it difficult. It's challenging. We already get that from white society, of course. You know what I'm saying? We don't need it internally. And that's why I, I love our group, because the climate and culture we create is one where I, I, I maintain it in a way that it's a space and and I know this term is cliche but it's it's somewhat of a safe space because we are not in there to demean each other to dump on each other and as I say if I can use the language to shit on each other you know so I, I created that space intentionally to be that so when we get on the computer or we get on our phones and we're talking and connecting with one another we're not dealing with the same stuff that we may deal with from a baby mother who's trying to drag us down or an employer or just some crazy hick out here in the streets or any of that stuff. We all need that for our, for our mental, for our sanity. We need those spaces where we can go and we can really actually feel safe to open up, to talk to each other, feel like we are there to support one another and all of that sort of stuff. And, and I encourage everybody to take people as individuals. If, if this one man isn't doing what he's supposed to do, Hold them accountable. Sure. Exactly. I don't make no excuses because it hurts our community as whole. If somebody ain't doing what they're supposed to do, 
then they they bringing us all down and and you know it in 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 a, in a certain way they bring us all down and then they have other people outside of our community who are looking at us and judging us based on this but even more important than that you just hurting the family and which in turn hurts the community so if you all right that's i think your sound your sound went out I, there you go man. oh okay and i don't know it just went out for a moment okay all okay right. Yeah, but that's what I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to make no excuses. I don't want to pretend that people who ain't doing what they're supposed to do are when they aren't. But right. also, you got to have that balance and give credit to the ones that are. And and that's the thing. Like we, a lot of times we don't get that credit. And 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 I don't mean that I have to get a cookie or a big piece of chicken. I don't need an award. But I just want you to acknowledge that we are out here. That brothers like myself, brothers like you, who fight who love our kids, who do everything we can for our kids, just acknowledge we are out here at least as much as you acknowledge that the brother who ain't doing what he's supposed to do is out here. Exactly, man. And you're doing a great job in, in actually, you know, displaying us in a different image. Man, this brother had on his, basically on his Facebook, there's multiple pictures of fathers being fathers. On the site, fathers being fathers. And we got to, listen, we got to keep pushing that. That got to be shown in the media. The media yeah. needs to see us with our children. Yeah. Family structure. It needs and to more importantly, mm -hmm. along with that, more importantly is these other generations coming up need to see that so that they value fatherhood. Because the problem is there's no way you can place value in fatherhood if, A, you don't have any positive examples, and, B, you have people who are or are deriding the institution of fatherhood you know what i'm saying if your mom is just talking about your dad all day and you know calling him this and that or whatever or all you see is people in your neighborhood who ain't doing right or getting locked up and all that how can you put any value as a as a young man to say yeah i want to be a father i want to be a proud father how can you value that if you've never seen anybody else value it so that's the thing we have to project those images and show that because we want to instill in the people coming up that there is value in fatherhood you know, mm. and that and that society appreciates it, you know, so that they want to take an active role and be as involved as possible with their own children because they've seen other people do it and they know the importance of it. Absolutely, man. That's that's pivotal information, man. Man, it's always an honor to have guests like yourself on my show, brother. Thank you, brother. And listen, for all the fathers, let me say this. All the fathers out there who are battling and you going through it. Come on, come over there and join the group. Yes. Come join the group. You know, be amongst the brethren. Be amongst brothers who've been there. Some brothers who can to help you in your situation. Brothers who can keep you informed, and brothers can keep you accountable. Um, we need that as men. So, and I know there's brothers just watching the show right now as we speak, and they they going through it. And listen, we're here for you. So you know, go join the site. Go join this brother's Facebook support and man it's just such a blessing man and i'll have you on anytime brother anytime. i appreciate it man my man i just if i could just really quickly it's, it's just a few things i wanted to drop real quick number sure. one as, as, as i mentioned earlier we didn't plan it this way it was just uh it just it, it worked out perhaps divine order or whatever it was you want to say that we are having our panda express fundraiser our first of many more to come and all of the information is on our facebook page the black fathers foundation we have an event uh on facebook it's called funding fathers black uh black mm, god sorry P panda express fundraiser i've been talking all day long man but um oh. there's an event on our facebook page so go check that out please and what it will tell you is that if you order online any panda express across the country anywhere anytime until they close tonight you have to order online or on their app and you have to put in the code if somebody doesn't mind putting in this code 909 775 hold on i'm gonna put it in sure. nine zero nine. I'm, i know what i'm eating tonight nine All right, zero my, nine. Man. my man i love yeah. it nine zero nine say it again seven seven five y'all let's get some let's get some panda tonight y'all yes sir so when you put that code in before you finalize your order you put that code in and it'll come up and it'll say the Black Fathers Foundation. So you make sure you know that we are getting our cut and we get a, a percentage 
of of the proceeds from all the sales and I, I i love this because so many other fundraisers are limited and you go to this one site or it's only for a certain amount of time or whatever this this fundraiser runs from the time they open i went up there at 12 today and got got my wife and myself lunch and actually i got a whole family meal so the kids are going to eat when they get home from work and everything off of that one meal so please go out there and support us on that the other thing that i wanted to mention is that we are in the process now of getting ready to launch the Derek U. Jones Emergency Student Aid Fund and what that involves in our first year that we're piloting that. It's a program where we've partnered with Accept Group in New Orleans and United Negro College Fund. United Negro College Fund is going to be managing this fund. And what, what the fund is about is at, in, in the beginning, it is for black men who are fathers attending HBCUs. And it provides emergency funding with we're looking at trying to get a 48 hour turnaround as as we as we know, we're hearing stories all the time, as as Joe Biden mentioned today about the the rising cost of college and the and the lowering amounts of aid that people are getting and all of this stuff and how many people are leaving school because they just can't afford it. We are making our best effort to help black men stay in school and to and to stay on track and get their degrees. So we're starting out with Southern University in New Orleans and Coppin in my, in my beloved hometown of Baltimore, which the good brother Derek O. Jones attended and graduated from himself, and his mom still works there. I just talked to his mom today. So we're launching that, and eventually we're gonna spread it to every HBCU across the country, where we're providing emergency funding for black men who are attending these universities, and they're also fathers. As, as, as urgent needs come up, we'll be able to give them grant money to help them stay on track. Man, that is, that is, man, hold on, we gotta give a round of applause for that. Appreciate it. We got to, man. So, so if anybody, Jeez. if anybody knows Mr. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Prime himself, Mr. Deion Sanders, I would, I would, I would love to meet that man and tell him about what we're doing. That's that's my guy right there. Oh yeah, Prime time. Deion, Deion, yeah, Prime. Hey, you hear time. that, Deion? Come to the show next, yeah, man. We know, man. Hey, we plug. We got to plug him in. Man, <laughs> yes, we had sir. we had some phenomenal guests on here, but I, the philanthropy work you did doing in the community, man, it just. It's just highly respected, brother. Like I appreciate that, man. Yeah, I really, really do. I'm, I'm, sure. I'm so glad we met. That was, that was divine order as well. Because I'm gonna be honest with you, when, mm-hmm. when I, when I, when I hit the brother uh, Woody up, and mm-hmm. I was like, man, I still, I still want to come, but it was like nine o'clock on Sunday, yeah. and I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm old. Nine o'clock is like <laughs> my bedtime. I don't be hitting the streets at nine o'clock, but I was like, nah, the brother. It's just a one time because as he said before, it was a one time event. Now he's talking about he wanted to do it more. <laughs> but um I was like, Real Yeah, tough. no, I gotta get down there. I gotta say what's up to my man at least. And and then we had the pleasure of meeting each other, and that's how this came about. So man, it's Real it, tough, it, man. I'm I'm grateful, brother. I really hey, am me too, brother. It was good breaking bread with you, man. Yes, like I'm glad you out in Atlanta. We're gonna hang out some more. Oh man. yeah, bread. oh yeah, we definitely really? gotta do that. Real you talk. already put me on. Uh, man, I got that curry chicken. I can't get that curry chicken off my mind, bro. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yo, we with the mangoes, y'all. I know y'all know oh, about man. mangoes. Y'all ATL. Man, we <laughs> ate good at mangoes, man. We yeah. sure did. Bro, we sure did. Yeah, we Real definitely got to do that again sometime soon, man. For sure, brother, man. It's, it's always an honor. Yes, sir. Building for the best like you, brother. Till next time, family. And if it's less, it less than some clothes and sediments you want to, you know, you know, give the people. I'm good. Just remember, if you get a chance, hit up that Panda Express. Yes. Um, the Black Fathers Foundation page will give you all the info and blackfathersfoundation.org. That's all I got for the people. Just stay connected with us and, and, and keep up with what we're doing. Absolutely. Thank you so much, brother. Thanks for coming. Thank to- you, brother. Peace, man. I really appreciate it. Peace. Yes. Thank you all, ladies and gentlemen, for joining, man. That was an excellent build, man. That was that was amazing for everybody who was sending super chats. It's highly appreciated. Akiqua, thank you for the five dollar uh, contribution. Hey, man, make sure y'all get y'all's panda tonight. You know what I'm saying? Support the brothers. All you, hey, listen, some of y'all ain't ate dinner yet. There you go. All you got to do is purchase your dinner, put that code in and you supporting black fathers. I mean, you can't go wrong with that, man. Y'all know that teriyaki chicken is kind of busting over there at Panda. Especially them chicken, them chicken egg rolls. Come on, let's get it popping. But uh man, just support, support the work. I want to tell everybody I love y'all. All the fathers out there, hold your head up. I know that this society is uh, you know, weighing down on us. And we we often look at the fact that we're raising children in such a uh morally decayed society. 
But listen, be influenced, be inspired. If you need brothers to talk to, then reach out. Reach out to that brothers, uh, to the Black Fathers Foundation website. Reach out to the Facebook page and let's build together. Again, I love each and every one of y'all. Thanks y'all for showing up today. I want everybody to share this stream, share it everywhere. If you want to clip it up, certain parts, and put it on your Facebook, your Instagram, Twitter, it doesn't matter. Anywhere you spread it, it's going to it's gonna be great. Thank y'all. I want y'all to have an excellent evening. With that being said, shalom and peace.